Why are capacitors short circuits for AC signals? Well, let's look at a very basic circuit. We've got a source and a resistor and a capacitor. And the capacitor is made from metal plates which have no conduction between the plates. There's no chance for an electron to travel from one plate to another through the capacitor. It is definitely an open circuit. So why is it that for AC signals, we can consider it to be a short circuit? Let's think about an equation for this circuit. Well, we've got the voltage of the source equals the voltage drop across the resistor, IR, plus the voltage across the capacitor. We also have an equation for the current and the voltage in a capacitor. So the current is the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage with respect to time. Let's put that into this equation here, and we can get this equation here. Now, we can take a Laplace transform of that to get this transfer function. And if you're not familiar with Laplace transforms, don't worry, you can skip ahead a couple of minutes in this video. I'm going to show some graphs that explain this short circuit graphically. But just for now, let's think about this transform. If you want more details, you can check out the description below this video. You'll find a web page which lists a full listing of videos on the channel, including videos on Laplace transforms. But let's consider an input function which is a step function. We're going to think about the step response of this circuit. So if the input is the step response function, this is the function that I've drawn here, then in the plus domain, this is one on S, we can substitute it in over here, and we can see that the resultant voltage across the capacitor in Laplace domain will be by this function. If we take the inverse Laplace transform, we find that the voltage as a function of time has this equation here. And that's what I've drawn here. It's a function, it's a step function, so it doesn't exist for negative time. Well, that's fine. We haven't put anything in before time is zero, so we don't expect anything to come out. And then as time increases, we have a waveform which is an exponential that approaches one because this exponential here approaches zero and we've got one minus that. This is the function here. It slowly ramps up and the rate of that ramp is given by RC. This is the rate of that exponential. So now let's use this to think about AC signals. Let's think about a voltage input, which is not just a step function, which goes up and stays constant. Let's start thinking about signals that are alternating. Let's think of a very basic one, not the sinusoidal one that we think of with AC signals for sinusoidal inputs, but let's think about this square function. And we're going to use this result of the step function to help understand the square function. Let's say our input voltage went up to a constant and then down to a negative constant, up to that constant again, back to the negative in time. Let's use our intuition from over here. When it jumps up to this value here, the output voltage is going to start rising just like it did over here. And that's what I've shown here. When it suddenly jumps back down, well, it's just going to be the inverse of this effect because the negative input would give a negative output. So in that case, the capacitor voltage is going to start ramping down again, according to this exponential. And then of course goes up to positive again, and then back to negative. So this is what would happen if you switch this input voltage here at this kind of rate. So to get to this AC idea, let's think about switching this very fast. So now I've drawn it here where the switching time is four times as fast as it was here. Of course, the output now is only going to have a chance to rise a little bit over that period of time. And then it's going to go into the negative and decrease a little bit. And as you can see here, this is what the output is going to look like. And the faster I switch this, the less chance there is for the capacitor to start responding before the opposite polarity comes. So you can see here that the input voltage is an alternating current. In this case, it's a square wave. But I think once you start looking at it like this, you can think that there's really going to be the same effect happening if this function was actually a sinusoid and not a square wave. 
So we worked out exactly what the answer was if it was a step function change. So these outputs are according to this equation. But I think you can imagine that if it wasn't quite a sharp jump, but it was a bit of a more smooth jump, you'd still be getting the same effect at the output. So when it starts oscillating fast, which it does for AC signals, because they are at much higher frequencies than these very low DC signals with DC changes, then the output is going to be zero. So the input is an alternating current, but the output voltage across the capacitor is going to equal zero. So even though it's an open circuit, at AC signals, the output is a short circuit. The voltage does not change. It stays at zero. So hopefully this has given you more insights into capacitors and in particular with AC signals as the input. If it has, please give the video a like. It helps others to find the video. You can subscribe to the channel for more videos. And as I said, check out the description below. You'll find a categorized listing on a web page with all the videos on the channel.